quit my job at an upscale steakhouse, but not before making sure all the customers knew what a prick the owner was. I was waiting tables at an upscale steakhouse, and the company culture was absolute garbage. The owner, Gary, was constantly throwing tantrums and screaming at everyone, and we all hated him. He'd line us all up before every shift just to berate us and yell how lucky we were that he'd hired us because we were all shit at our jobs and no one else would ever have us. Stuff like that. The only reason anyone ever stuck around was because the money was good due to the high ticket prices and solid customer base, as well as the fact that there weren't many other employment options for fine dining service in the area. In addition to being a massive prick, Gary was also a cheap bastard. There was this six-foot-tall dessert cooler in the kitchen that had a broken door, and he put off fixing it for months because he didn't want to spend the money, so it was just sort of hanging on its hinge, and you had to be really careful opening it. Inevitably, during the height of a Saturday night rush, it fell completely off and hit one of the servers hard. So she's laying there on the kitchen floor, bleeding from a serious-looking wound on her head, and Gary is standing over her and screaming down at her, Way to go! Just brilliant! What the fuck am I supposed to do now? It's the middle of the rush, you've got a full section, and no one's going to be able to pick up your goddamn tables because everyone who works here is useless and incompetent. You should have been more careful. I'd seen a lot of his shit, but this was the hard line, and I made a decision right then that I was out. So when I got home that night, I typed up a letter to Gary, telling him exactly why I was quitting and leaving no detail out when it came to his tantrums, his verbal abuse, and the hazards in the workplace that he wouldn't address. I printed out 30 copies, went in early for my opening shift the following day, mid-afternoon. The place was only open for dinner, and hid them all over the restaurant where guests would find them, in the menus, under the napkins, on the tables, in between paper towels, in the restrooms, etc. Some were in really obscure places, so that they wouldn't be found right away and would keep popping up randomly. Surprise! allowing my legacy to live on. Then, instead of working my shift, I left before the pre-shift lineup. Fast forward to a couple days later, when a co-worker reached out and shared with me the beautiful details of Gary's head almost exploding with rage when he found out about the letters. A couple tables read them and walked out before ordering. People in the dining room could hear him screaming from the kitchen. Apparently, they were still finding letters weeks later, and every time one surfaced, the vein in Gary's forehead would pop out and he'd disappear into his office and slam the door. It remains one of my proudest moments, and my only regret is that I couldn't be a fly on the wall watching this all unfold.